You're welcome back to the marketplace. Now, the amount of dollars the Bank of Ghana has released to support the CD since May this year has reached around $700 million. Unfortunately, this intervention has yielded little results. Let's get some explanation in this report. Sources say on a daily basis, about 10 to $25 million is given out to support operations of commercial banks depending on the demand for Forex. Some of these funds, Joy Business understands, went directly to some state-owned firms that were in the business of importing fuel for the local market. However, some of the commercial banks have told Joy Business, even though the Bank of Ghana was on the market, most of their demands were not met. But the question still remains about whether managers understand what is really causing the city's depreciation and whether this kind of intervention is really needed. Or better still, are we touching the right spots for the required responses? Well, the World Cocoa Foundation says it is committing over $100 million to help boost Ghana's cocoa industry. This was made known to Joy Business by the president of the foundation, Richard Kobe, in Accra. He says the consistent growth of the sector has attracted massive foreign investments so far. Richard Kobe spoke to Joy Business at the sidelines of the Ghana Cocoa Platform Validation Workshop. The World Cocoa Foundation and our member companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars every year to support the cocoa farmers in improving the profitability and productivity of their crop. Yeah. You have stated that there's going to be some partnerships between Ghana and other, you know, and the World Cocoa Foundation, for instance, in improving productivity. Could you expect that for us? The World Cocoa Foundation and our member companies are very committed to partnering with Cocobod and the farmers of Ghana on key sustainability issues. We've already launched a new Cocoa and Forests initiative, which is designed to stop any deforestation in the cocoa supply chain in Ghana and promote the restoration and protection of forests. We're also working closely with Cocobod on improving the productivity of cocoa because the yields of cocoa in Ghana are relatively low compared to world averages. So we think with improvements in improved planting material, better agricultural practices, the application of fertilizers, the Ghana cocoa farmer can double their yields. And it's still live on the marketplace. Let's now move on to one other uh, development story now. And GCB Bank has recorded a 29% drop in profits before tax for the financial year 2017. Profit before tax dropped from 467 million Ghana cities in 2016 and, uh, to 332 million Ghana cities in 2017. Now, speaking at the annual general meeting, the chairman of the board of the bank, Jude Arthur, revealed that the purchase of the defunct UT and Capital Banks brought challenges which affected the bank's bottom line as well as a decline in Treasury bill rates where the bank heavily invests. My colleague uh, Philip Namfuri has just returned from the annual general meeting. He's right with me right here in the studio. Now, uh, Philip, what actually accounted for this massive drop in profits? Okay, so Emmanuel, look at it from two angles. The first one is the assumption of UT Bank and Capital Bank's assets. Okay. You know, last year, GTB Bank, through a purchase and assumption agreement, talked about the assets and liabilities of exactly. UT and Capital Bank. Now, with some of these assets and liabilities, there were some challenges which uh, caused GCB to increase its operating expense in other areas. So by taking over these, or taking over in quotes of UT Bank and Capital Bank, they experienced some financial challenges. The other important part is the drop in treasury bill rates. Okay. And if you realize on the markets now, we have a decline in money market rates. That's uh, lending rates by governments or there's a treasury bill rate. So you realize that as a bank, you're supposed to diversify your portfolio. So you put some of your funds in loans and some into securities like treasury okay. bills. So that if your loans go bad, you have something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. With this, GC Bank had a problem with that in terms of like it has dropped. So the returns on this, on this has also dropped and this affected this. But in our engagements with uh, the chairman of GCB, that's Mr. Judatha, mm -hmm. he shed some more light on this. So I think we, should, we can listen to him now. The bank has performed well given the circumstances. I mean, um, uh, we were not the only institution to drop in profits. We had the sale and assumption that, of course, you've got to deal with um, uh, issues of um, uh, 
migration of systems, migration of staff, and some expenditure that comes with it. But let us not forget that the only reason the, the, the migration and the assumption is not the only reason for the drop in profits. The general business environment was low, and as you recall, we made a clear statement in us that the drop in the Treasury bill rates also significantly affected our revenues. Since initially, GCB had quite a lot of funds placed in Treasury bill, and this um, the rates have dropped significantly um, during the year under review. But having said that, we, we have a very resilient staff force, we have a solid business plan, we have a good balance sheet, and we are poised to really move. All right, so that was the board chairman of GC Bank, Jude Arthur. Now, Philip, I believe the issue of the minimum capital requirements may have come up at the annual general meeting. What exactly did they say about it? Okay, so one of the special resolutions they were seeking for at this AGM was to transfer 400 million from their income surplus to their stated capital. So shareholders at the AGM have granted the board and management this approval. So they are going to transfer 400 million Ghana cities from their income surplus to their stated capital. What, what exactly does that mean, income surplus to stated capital? OK, so over the course of financial years, that's the years in which the bank operates, 2016, 15, maybe they, they have saved some of their profits okay. over the years. So they have accumulated some nice reserves. So they're going to transfer this to their stated capital. As of now, their stated capital is 100 million Ghana cities. So mm -hmm. when they do that transfer from 400, in addition to the 100, they're going to have a stated minimum capital of 500 million, which is even beyond the, the, the Bank minimum. of Ghana's 400 minimum capital. And would that not affect the, their dividend payments and others? Um, funny enough, no. They, are, they were touting there at the meeting that they are one of the only listed banks to declare a dividend for the year 2017. Uh, it was okay. 10 pesos per share, and it was a total of 26.5 million Ghana cities. And shareholders were clamoring for more as usual, mm. but okay. yes, okay. there was a dividend payout for the 20, year 2017. All right, thank you very much for that update. Thank you too. Philip Namfuri is a joint business correspondent. He's just bringing some updates from the annual general meeting of GCB Bank, where the bank has recorded a 29% drop in profit before tax. Moving on now, government has constituted a capital market working group to craft a master plan for the local capital market to shape the industry within the next 10 years. This was disclosed by the chairman of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Albert Essien, at the exchange's annual general meeting also held in Accra yesterday. Once again, Philip Namfuri has more in this report. The financial statement for the Ghana Stock Exchange for the year ending December 31, 2017, together with other reports, were adopted. The AGM also approved the election of a number of individuals to the Council of the Exchange. The meeting brought together management of the exchange and various stakeholders in Ghana's capital market. Managing Director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Kofi Yamwa, described the decision to establish a capital working group as a step in the right direction as it will bring some coordination to the growth of the market. I see it from two main angles. To make sure that we have, going into the future, medium and long-term future, we have a coordinated capital market plan, uh, one that brings the banks uh, that are doing uh, long-term products, uh, the exchange, the insurance community that are also doing long-term products into a plan that is very well coordinated. Uh, I believe the minister's view is that in the long term, Ghana should become a hub as far as the sub region is concerned, if not the entirety of Africa. And so that idea is each of the major players shouldn't be sitting in isolation and therefore this idea of the capital market working group so that not only our actions but policy will also be influenced by some of the discussions that goes along. The GSC recorded a 130% growth in profit after tax for the year 2017. The profit grew from 5.38 million Ghana cities in 2016 to 12.7 million Ghana cities in 2017. He also explained the reasons behind the growth of the GSE profit. This particular change was driven by increases in trade volumes and values, uh, which is which uh, by by way of which we earn commissions, just as the brokers also earn commissions from their transactions, and by way of listings. And in terms of listings, 
it's not just equities that we do list. Uh, we list uh, fixed income securities. In 2017, by the chairman's uh, comment and my review, there wasn't new uh, uh, listings, which will happen in 2018. But there were additional listings by already listed companies. And in addition, there were also listings of fixed income securities. Uh, notable among those fixed income securities was Esla PLC, uh, Government of Ghana uh, uh, notes and bonds that were listed, uh, listings by a number of corporate uh, issuers, the likes of Bayport, PBC, Ghana Cocoa Board, and so forth. Yes, so they were anchored on these two main factors, listings and secondary market trading. And still within the capital market space, President of Group Indum, Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum, is proposing a minimum rate for interest on investments to ensure a more sustainable investment sector. According to Dr. Indum, the trend of customers demanding higher rates have been the root cause of the collapse of many financial institutions. Speaking at the launch of the 25th anniversary of Gold Coast Investments, Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum stressed the need for lower rates to protect the financial industry. <laughs> The launch of the 25th anniversary celebration of Gold Coast Holding was also marked with the commissioning of a new head office building for the company in Accra, as well as the unveiling of a new logo for the brand. Speaking on the sidelines of the event, President of Group Indum, Dr. Papakwesi Indum, called for a drop in interest rates to protect players in the investment markets. We want longevity. We want long-term sustainability. We don't want people making uh, huge, huge promises they can't keep. So as a matter of fact, many people, many people in Ghana have lost their life savings, have lost their monies because they had fallen prey to all these nice sounding promises of 70 percent, 50 percent returns and so on and so forth. We want that era to be behind us. That's why we need decent but sustainable returns to be given to people. And, and so our view is T plus three, that is Treasury bill plus three, should, should be where we, 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 we put the ceiling. And then if anybody wants a higher return, well, let them go and invest their monies, let them buy some shares, um, let them go and give it to uh, a mutual fund or some other fund and let them find different ways but safe ways of investing the money. And if you do it that way, you, it will grow. On his part, the chief executive officer of Gold Coast Holding, Kwame Esumenin, revealed that the firm will be exploring other investment areas in the future. There are new products that we are running, um, going to um, bring on board. Um, we have a um, healthcare fund that we think that it will help change the healthcare industry. Um, we're going to be doing more on investment in uh, food security. So um, we have a um, RISE project that we are um, investing in and, and we hope to expand it and create more opportunities and also um, build a um, lot of tonnage in the system. So these are the kinds of things that we want to do. Of course, we also get into some technology, um, fintech kind of thing. Um, in future. Sheila Tamaklu for Joy Business. Meanwhile, the Securities and Exchange Commission says it will be implementing some new measures to ensure diversification and prudent performance of the capital market. In a speech delivered at the launch, Deputy Director of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Paul Abbeville, said changing the trend of offering fixed returns is one of such new measures. There are a few initiatives that we're bringing into the market. And some of these are actually on the books already. However, we've communicated to market operators that we will be enforcing these more diligently. An area that we have communicated on is the trend of people offering fixed returns to investors. Fund management is based on the premise of offering a competitive portfolio management strategy. Um, you, you, you target a benchmark and you build a portfolio of securities that an investor on his own might have a hard time compiling such a portfolio. Your competitive advantage comes from scale, from service delivery, and from the track record you're able to develop and consistency in your performance. When we offer fixed returns, it mixes up the business of banking 
and fund management, resulting in regulatory arbitrage. Going forward, we are looking, we won't look kindly on such activities. We also want to focus on prudential returns and compliance. The financial sector relies on information, and timely submission of accurate information cannot be overstated. So the information that we expect from market operators um, provide us with a means of forming policy and taking action as and when required. So we require one, timely information, and accurate information. The last step is also disclosure to investors. As the markets have evolved, business models have also changed. Um, there's private equity that has grown significantly, but hitherto was not regulated by the SEC. We want to bring that under our, our, our ambit as well. The new law, the SIA Act 929, 2016, allows for us to regulate that sector. Let's move away now from the financial sector and the gradual evolution of online music marketing, which has fast replaced the traditional sale of cassettes and compact discs, may be the best breakthrough that ever happened to the music industry. Contemporary music lovers say it is more convenient to purchase music online, while some musicians say it is reliable to make profits through the sales. Now, John Fafali Kofi recently spoke with a music app developer who says his app can easily help put music on the international market. In the past, all musicians needed to do after recording their songs on cassettes and CDs was to send them to distribution centers for sale. This mode of selling had great impact on the music business. Now, things have changed. The days of cassettes and CDs are virtually non-existent. Musicians in recent times make use of the internet to market their music in order to reach wider customer base than before. Richard Isuma is a developer of Apris, an application that allows artists to upload their music onto the internet for free. He shares how this app has helped many artists. Globally, we have companies like CD Baby, DistroKid, Tunco, and CD Run. These are international companies that are American and Canadian and Australian companies. So globally, if you want to get your song onto iTunes, Amazon, and all these international stores, you actually need to use these companies that will put your songs out there. So we realize that uh, most of the Ghanaians don't have how much it takes in order to distribute their song, especially the emerging ones. Because those international companies, they will charge you about $19.9 .9 to distribute one song for you onto iTunes and so. And then an album, they take you $39.9 .9 in order to put your song onto all these international stores. And we realize that the emerging ones who are coming up onto the music industry, who are so passionate about music and have seen music as a source of livelihood for them, they don't have that resources to be paying to be uploading their songs onto those international stores. So we developed this free system for them whereby we take your song, we take the content that you've done, we look at the sound quality and everything, we do a nice cover art and all those things for and then we now distribute your song onto the stores you are my sweet honey. Zoe B explains how the online marketing has imparted on his career. Before, I was just really uh, making money from shows and just shows only until my distributor had called me and he, and he said he had some money for me. I received about 10,000 at that time, yeah, like last year, like, like two years ago, sorry. And I was like, 10,000? I was like, yeah, that's your sales from like iTunes. And I'm like, wow, really cool. Okay, and then he basically told me that I have to be serious with like this online stuff and, you know, put my music out there. And he mentioned a few names. He said it's me and Shaka Beer. Um, yeah, I think somebody else. They just three. He said, yeah, we are the ones that, like, really are having, like, you know, um, uh, massive clout on, you know, these um, streaming platforms. Nelly is a budding musician, and she explains how beneficial the app has been to her music career so far. I think the online is more effective because the CDs these days... The youths and the, the age ones, are get, everybody's going online these days. So the CDs are a kind of fading away. Nobody's dealing with such things. With, with online things, I believe sky is our limit. I want people to go more of online because everybody these days have phone. And the phone is connected with internet or one of, you have your megabytes. So it will cost you 
not much money to stream the music, download, and you know, support whatever work we are doing. And I pray we're going to give you the best. Here in Ghana, you will need at least 250 to 1,000 Ghana cities to record a good song, and at least 2,000 to 10,000 cities to get a good music video that can go viral on the internet. Frank is a communication director of Xylophone Art Fund. So the fund works like a, a commercial facility, like a loan, but it's a non-interest bearing loan. So if you take, for example, X amount, we support you with that X amount, with not just the money, but with also, um, you know, capacity building to direct you, because people on the board are bankers, arts people, creative people, so they can also direct what you're going to do with the money. So you request for it like you are requesting a normal loan facility from a bank and then you tell us what you're going to use it for and when you administer it when it will be done for you to bring the money back intact and by the time the money will be back you would have made volumes of profits for yourself and give their money back to them without interest so with the emergence of these interventions do we see a brighter future for these up-and-coming artists all in time will tell Certainly a major breakthrough for uh, the music industry. And on that note, we wrap up this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace. It's been great having you around, and I hope you did enjoy my company throughout the week. My name is Imano Abuaji. We are three. Let's meet again next week for more business. Have a good afternoon.